Hi everyone, welcome to this video. This is the fourth video in the series, I think. Or is it the third? No, it's the fourth. Yeah. So, there's something I forgot to mention in the last video, and I'll mention it now. So, in MicroPython, well, in Fonny actually, in Fonny, there are two different ways to code. There's the script mode, where you type in some code in here, and then you press run, like the way we did it in the previous video. Or this is called the interactive mode. So I told you that this is how you could exchange data via the shell. But you can actually program directly into this. Look, print hello, and it does it, it executes it straight away. So yeah, this is a, this is a script mode and um, an interactive mode. And I just thought I'd tell you that before I move on. Should have been in the last video. Anyway, so in this video, it's purely um, MicroPython syntax, or you could say Python syntax. All right, so now to get on with the, the actual video itself. In this video, I'm gonna talk about MicroPython. I'm gonna give you some examples of how you can get MicroPython to do what you want it to do. I'm gonna talk about the syntax um, and that sort of thing. So I've learned this language before, and I'll admit that I, I wouldn't say I struggle with it, but it doesn't come naturally to me, this particular language. It's supposed to be one of the easiest languages to learn, although I don't believe that. I don't buy that. I think that um, it depends on how your brain is wired. Um, I mean, there are different types of languages. There's, um, there are symbolic sort of languages, uh, for example, C Sharp, where they use sort of symbols to sort of um, denote things symbols as part of the syntax. You can have languages like um, Visual Basic which has got like a lot of English in it for example end, start, with, stuff like that. Um, and there are languages like this where well it just has a different angle on it. So one of the things with this language is, is that um, indentation is part of the syntax. Whereas C Sharp which is my favourite language it doesn't make any difference where what's indentate, indented, it doesn't matter if you have a space, it doesn't matter about any of that. What matters is the structure of symbols. Anyway, I, I digress completely, but um, I'm going to go through some examples in MicroPython um, and you'll be able to see what I mean. You'll pick it up quite quickly, I'm sure. Right, the first thing I'm going to show you is the for loop. So for loops are extremely common. In fact, they're pretty much integrated into every programming language that I can think of. And it's a way to instruct the computer that something's gonna be repeated. In other words, here's a bit of code, repeat it so many times, or maybe repeat it forever, or maybe repeat it depending on something. Anyway, in, um, <coughs> in MicroPython, this is the logic to do that. So we'll do for, I in range 10 that right so we've got 4 I in range 10 so 4 means hey there's there's some code here that I want you to repeat I is a let's say it's a temporary variable a variable is a bit of data in RAM or some space in RAM that stores some data uh, while you're working with it in is just a keyword like for, which um, builds the syntax to say this is a for loop. Range is a special, well, I was going to say function, it's not really a function, but it's a, let's say it's a keyword that results in numbers from zero to whatever you put in the, in the brackets. So in, in my case here, range 10 means give me all the numbers up to 10. Um, colon means okay here's the code that I want you to repeat so in MicroPython if we were to write in here print hello it wouldn't work well it would but it, it wouldn't work as we intended it to so if something is in something in MicroPython so for example if this code is in a for loop it has to be indented like that. 
So you can press tab and it indents it. So what this means now is for a number in, we can just say 10, keep repeating and basically what will happen is that will iterate up and up and up and up and print hello. So if we run this now it should print hello 10 times and it has, you see there? See in the shell? By the way of course I've got my Pico plugged in uh, for it to do that. So it's run it 10 times. Now let's make it, let's go a step further and change hello to uh, new number then we'll put a comma after the inverted commas and say I. So this means for each iteration print loop number and then whatever the loop number is. I see that? Now click run it says loop number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. By the way, if you say range 10, it does not include 10. But that's okay because it starts from 0. It's a 0 based thing. So it still does it 10 times, but it doesn't actually include the number 10 itself. Um, so that's a, a really basic way that we can, we can do that. So let's delete now, delete the text so it's just print i. Then go to line one, press enter, let's press it twice. And on line two, type in print starting loop. Not starting loop, start to loop. Copy the line, that's a bit lazy this I know, but copy the line, paste it in line seven, delete that indentation. What will happen if we don't delete the indentation? Well, it should include it in the for loop, which is not what we want. But I will show you actually. So, starting loop, loop completed. Let's change that to loop completed. Now, if I run that, because it's indented, it will repeat that as many times as the for loop tells it to do. And I'll show you that now. See, loop completed, loop completed. Now, if I take the indentation away, it's no longer in the for loop, so if I do it now, it'll work as intended. See? Starting loop, 0, 1, blah, 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 loop completed. And that's a basic for loop. That's a very, very basic for loop. So that's the first thing that I want to show you. Okay, so what could a for loop be used for? So let's say you're in a library and somebody scanned a book and then in a transaction they've scanned six items back in, they've returned six items, maybe it'll want to print six labels to stick on the box to say returned such and such a date, I don't know, and then maybe they go on a trolley and go off and somebody sorts them, I don't know. But let's say for example that that would make sense, this would be an ap appropriate um, solution to that. For however many times the person has scanned it, do this repeat it so many times and then here you'd have probably a procedure that says something like print label something like that anyway all right the next thing i'm going to show you is a while loop so we're putting here while true so while true let's say say hello so while true hello now if i run this it should just go crazy and run it as fast as it can Let's say, right, yeah, there you go. It's spewing out hello as fast as it can. What we need to do now is put a, a bit of a, we need to put some time management on it. So we need to import a library, and the library is called uTime. Programming is all about libraries and stuff like that. Um, since the 70s, people have been writing libraries, and more than likely, we are actually still using libraries that were starting to be developed in the 70s right now. Um, so, libraries cover a lot of commonly used things. I mean, if somebody does something a lot, there's a library for it, pretty much. So libraries usually cover stuff like time, algorithms, um, common algorithms, you know, mathematical algorithms. Um, the oldest ones, in my opinion, will be the mathematical ones. Anyway, getting to the point, we're importing a library and it's called uTime. And this manages time. 
over here where it says print, I'm going to say uh, u time dot sleep, and it wants a number of seconds. So I put one. So now we've imported the time library. We're saying start and leap while true. So the while the while statement accepts anything which it can determine as true or false. So you could say something like while something equals something, or while something is greater than, while something is less than, while something equals, or while something does not equal. It wants to be able to determine if something is true or false. Because I've written while true in here, it just means while true is true, which is forever. So while so true is always true. So basically it means forever. So forever, go through this loop. But now it's saying, after doing what it needs to do, sleep for one second. So if I run it now, it should say hello forever, but it'll have a break for every second, you know, one second after it's done what it did previously. So you can see there, one, two, three, four. And that's the second thing that I wanted to show you. A while loop is typically used in, they use a lot for networking. So while we are connected or while we are listening, or while we want to listen, then listen. While we're connected, transmit this to the server. Something like that. So while, while something is yes or no, on or off, then do this. It's typically used for things that last for a very long time. Um, yeah, so something like network connections and stuff like that. Of course, it's not limited to that though. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is an if statement. So let's say here, um, name equals Anthony. Then you say, if name equals equals Anthony. So equals equals means, is it equal to? It's a comparator. Is it equal to? But one equals means that this does equal it. So you're saying name equals Anthony, it means the name does equal Anthony. In other words, make it Anthony. If you say equals equals, it means it means like um, a comparative check. So, if name equals equals Anthony, it means it means like if they're the same. All right. So if name is Anthony, then print hello. Let's say else. Print goodbye. So this is like some sort of security thing. So we'll say, if name's Anthony, then hello, otherwise goodbye. And it says error. Why? Ah, oh, because else needs a semicolon, okay. So up here, Anthony is, no, name is set to Anthony. So it says hello. So if I change that to something else like that, it should say goodbye. Start and loop, goodbye, loop is completed. So it's not actually a loop, it's a check, but it doesn't matter too much. We say check there, starting check. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have an input. So input, uh, what is your name? What is your name? Let's run that. Starting, you can see it says, starting check, what is your name? My name is John, and then press enter. Goodbye, check completed. So I run it again. What is your name? Anthony, and it says hello. So that's the, the sort of thing you'd use in security. Like if something is allowed, if something's true, then do something, otherwise don't do it. So that's the next one, that's um, an if statement. So in this video we've covered a for loop, which is basically do something so many times. We've done the while loop, which is do something while some condition is true. And we've done an if statement, which is if something is true, then do this, otherwise do that. So that's what we've covered in this video. Um, and that'll do for now. So we're up to page 33 in the book now. 
So I'll see you next week. Bye.